Okay, thank, uh, thank you, Dr. Liu. So we can now sh share the... You can share your screen. Yep. ...page of the presentation. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending upon where you are situated. Thank you for attending our presentation. The title of our research is Effect of Human Drivers, Time Delay and Heterogeneity on the Traffic Stabilization Capacity of CAVs. And uh, we, we, we did this work in conjunction with our research team, which includes Do Dr. Sky Chen, uh, Paul Ha, Jichang Dong, Runjia, Du, Rain, and Shia Zong. Now, the context of this research is mixed traffic where CAVs and HDVs coexist. And we all know that in the transition period, that's what's gonna happen. You know, there's gonna be uh, a long time before it will be fully CAVs, you know, and, 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 and therefore um, CAVs will have to, uh, adapt, to adapt and adjust to the presence of HDVs, human driven vehicles. In the same way, HDVs will have to adapt and adjust in the presence of CAVs. So in this work, we have designed an AI controller for use in a CAV, you know, and, 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 the, and, the, and the, 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 the purpose is to stabilize an even traffic flow, right? And consequently to lower the risk of collision in traffic environments. But we have built on foundational work that has been done by other researchers in the past. What we are contributing to knowledge, our contribution is that we are modeling the HDV dynamics in the traffic stream, and we consider two important things, the HDV's driver heterogeneity and the time delays that are associated with the human perception reaction. You know, as human beings, there's always a delay in the way we perceive and, and, and react, you know, to stimuli. And, and this research takes all those, takes these two things into consideration. So in fact, what are we doing? We are answering the following question. The question we, we are answering, what is the effect of the HDV, the human driver's time delay and heterogeneity on the maximum number of HDVs that a CAV can stabilize? Remember I told you that CAVs are being brought into the traffic stream to stabilize the traffic flow of the HDVs and other vehicles. So what's the maximum number of HDVs that can be stabilized? In other words, what is the effect of the time delay and heterogeneity on the minimum number of CAVs that we need to introduce into the traffic stream to stabilize a given number of HDVs. So in this work that we're doing, the, the CAVs are not a travel mode by, by themselves, no. We are bringing them in purposely as an instrument of traffic operations management. So they may be police vehicles, CAVs, CAV police vehicles, police CAVs, right? Let's call it that. That are specifically injected into the traffic stream to play a, a role of Shape heading other vehicles behind them, you know, by speeding up at certain times and slowing down at, at others other times so that they can smoothen the traffic flow to reduce the perturbations that occur in the traffic stream. So that is the import of what we are doing. That's the essence of our work. So going to the next page, the next page of this slide, the contents, what we're gonna talk about this afternoon, uh, I'll give you a brief research overview of what we do at CCAT. Uh, then, then UJ will give you a study background and methodology, and I'll come in to talk about our numerical experiments, and then UJ will end up with the will end the presentation with the results. So on the next slide, uh, this this chart here, uh, designed by Dr. Liu and his team, is a very well uh, de designed figure that tells everything that happens at CCAT. You know, it can be categorized in these six themes, as, as you may call it, you know, policy and planning, which includes demand assessment and impact evaluations. We also do human factors uh, in CAVs, infrastructure preparedness, infrastructure preparedness, and operations and controls, modeling and implementation. Now you see, I have colored some of these black, the, the three black circles, represent the areas that this particular presentation is addressing. All right, enabling technologies, modeling and implementation and operations and controls. So let's go to the next slide, please. So I'll hand over to UJ now for her to continue this presentation. Okay, UJ. Okay, thank you, Professor. Um, 
so uh, we nowadays we are still faced with a lot of transportation challenges. As in several other countries, traffic congestion continues to pose a serious problem in the United States. On average, the US commuter wasted nearly seven four working days in 2017 sitting in congested traffic. This time wasted because of congestion can lead to reduced economy productivity of transport dependent and transport related industries. There are estimates projecting that about 4% of fuel will be wasted in congestion in 2050. And in efforts to mitigate congestion, extensive studies have been carried out and researchers have identified the underlying causes of congestion. There are mainly two types of congestion. And um, the first one is uh, called bottleneck related and the other is non-bottleneck related. For the first type of congestion, the triggers are usually related to lane change, merge or change in grade. And for the other type of congestion, although there might not be um, physical bottlenecks, um, while human, um, human drivers may exhibit some irrational and spontaneous driving patterns, which can also lead to jams. And this type of congestion are usually referred to as phantom traffic jams. This video shows an experiment conducted by Sugiyama's group. They use ring road settings and there is no physical bottlenecks. And all the vehicles were initialized with relatively stable speed and headways. But at certain time instant, some um, human driven vehicles uh, pressed hard brake and then um, accelerate quickly. This more perturbation could um, propagate through the entire platoon and finally lead to string instability. Um, as I just showed, there are as I just showed, there are several experimental studies reproducing the phenomenon, but did not provide explicit solutions to the string instability. And thanks to connected, connected and autonomous vehicles we may propose some potential solutions to this problem. This type of vehicle combines vehicle automation and multi-vehicle cooperation. There are a lot of studies investigating the estimated impacts of deploying CAVs. Um, for example, um, CAVs may help with enhancing safety by replacing human drivers with autonomous driving systems. Also, it can help um, help with improving capacity of existing roads and increasing productivity. In this research, we want to design a um, controller for AVs to help with traffic operational management. So how we achieve this um, objective? We um, use a concept of shepherding. Shepherding means um, activities guide mobile entities to move smoothly and efficiently. Um, examples are readily found in our daily life. For example, animal husbandry, fish swarms, and bird blocks. Um, we want to apply the similar idea in transportation engineering by deploying special vehicles, for example, police CAVs, to guide the following vehicles to behave in ways that smoothen the flow. So the basic logic um, of this idea is an, an autonomous vehicle can issue precise control by considering the overall traffic conditions. And therefore it can dampen the shock wave and vehicles following the autonomous vehicle can therefore experiencing um, a can experience an attenuated perturbation. Um, this idea um, sounds very promising, but we have to face with the challenge of mixed traffic flow. Um, 
because um, there is long transition period between the 100 market penetration of AV achieved. So um, this period means that both CAVs and human-driven vehicles will share the same traffic space. And, and um, during this transition period, we have to contend with a mixed traffic stream. That means that um, the algorithms in the AV controller will need to be designed to consider reaction time delay and heterogeneity in human behaviors. All right, so with that nice background, uh, we now come to the objectives of our study. And of course, the context, like I told you, is that we are considering mixed traffic flow conditions. So uh, can you click the, the, the button, UJ? All right, so we are designing the controller for the AV to account for the human driver's uh, behavioral heterogeneity, you know, which has been found to be the cause of these phantom traffic jams. And we are also accounting for the perception reaction time delay with human beings, with, with, with human beings. Human beings are not machines, right? And it takes time for us to absorb the information and react to it. That delay is, is, is very important in terms of uh, the effectiveness of, of, of this. So it has to be considered. We are also formulating analytic conditions so we can evaluate the performance of the controllers that we are designing, that we have designed based on strength stability, traffic safety, and travel efficiency. And finally, we are, we are, we have, we are, we are de defining an optimization problem that will help us minimize the number of autonomous vehicles that we need to carry out the task of traffic stabilization. Okay, UJ. Okay, um, now let's discuss more about how we design the controllers to realize the st stabilization goals. So um, this figure shows a standard platoon driving on the highway. And these red boxes represent four CAVs and blue ones are HDVs. And the platoon drives from left to right. So this, pro this platoon um, comprises a leading vehicle, which is labeled as zero and makes traffic that follow, follow the leading vehicle. And we assume that the leading vehicle has unpredictable movements which means it can um, maybe it can like uh, press hard brake and um, accelerate very fast, which may lead to string instability. And to ensure a rigorous inquiry into the issue, we make the following assumptions for the platoon. First, we assume that all the vehicles in the platoon are well connected. Then in that case, the CAV can obtain um, the information or status of other vehicles, including their position, velocity, and acceleration. Second, we assume um, we do not consider communication errors or propagation time delay. So after we are clear about the problem settings, we have to determine how we model the dynamics of vehicles. So for um, HDVs, because we want to um, incorporate heterogeneity and time delay, we use a full velocity model and including the time delay term, also the um, parameters for different vehicles are, um, are different. So this, um, this equation shows the dynamics of ice vehicle. And, and here um, X represents for the position X dot means the velocity and W dot is acceleration of ice vehicle. So this equation mainly um, contains two parts. So the first part um, represents a vehicle aims at traveling at an optimal velocity. And the second part is for vehicles to um, follow the preceding vehicle. And alpha and beta trade off between the uh, the um, the two objectives. And for CAVs, we use a similar model, but uh, we do not consider time delay. So given the models of both HDVs and CAVs, we have to propose some metrics to assess the performance of the designed controller. 
and we mainly, we mainly consider three aspects. So the first is about vehicular string stability. These requirements ensure that for individual vehicle, if it's confronted with um, some perturbation, it will not amplify this um, perturbation. And here is the sufficient conditions for these requirements. Um, but the stability of an individual vehicle does not necessarily translate into the stability of the entire platoon. So we further impose the um, platoon string stability, which can be expressed mathematically as this equation. And um, the third perspective is related to safety and efficiency considerations. Because although we um, got two string stability requirements, um, the, those does not guarantee that the system is collision free or efficient. So um, we posed um, the lower bound and upper bound for the headways. So first for minimum headway, this um, is stopping distance to avoid collision. And for maximum headway, it ensures that the vehicle will not maintain an unreasonably large headway. So with the dynamics, as a vehicle dynamics and the um, assessing metrics, we can formalize the, uh, the problem into an optimization problem. In these settings, human-driven vehicles are characterized by heterogeneity and time delay. Our goal is to design controllers to safely and efficiently stabilize the platoon. And here is the formulation of this problem. So by tuning K1, K2, K3, which are the um, control parameters, we want to optimize the number of human-driven vehicles that can be stabilized. And um, also uh, we want to ensure the safety and efficiency. Okay, great. So in, in order to demonstrate that this method works, you know, with what we design works or can work in, in, in reality, in, in practice, we designed we designed a numerical experiment, you know, and, and we set some scenarios. Some, some scenarios. The initial velocity was set, set as forty five miles per hour, and the parameters lambda two and lambda three uh, were set at one point five uh, per second and two meters. Uh, lambda two, by the way, is the parameter that defines the time headway, and lambda three is the parameter that defines the distance headway. You know, and 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 the purpose of this exp of this methodology was to uh, examine the influence of the heterogeneity and time delay of human drivers, right? And therefore, we introduced the following parameters: uh, the alpha, beta, and the and the, the, the delta of xi. We introduced those parameters to characterize the HDV models. HDV means human-driven vehicle. To characterize them and uh, and to sample them from the following distributions. As you see, the uh, normal, they were all, we assumed a normal distribution for all three of them, which is, is the easiest way to go, yes, but those distributions in reality, we could, in future work, we, we could look at, look at get data and, and analyze them to see what's the most appropriate distribution. But for now, we just assume that we're all normally distributed. And, uh, and therefore, we use that, the, those settings in the numerical experiment. Go ahead, UJ. Yeah. Okay, um, now let's um, discuss more about like the results of the experiment. So this figure on um, show, uh, so this color map shows the performance of our uh, design controllers and color of the figure represents the number of HDVs that one CAV can safely and efficiently stabilize. The brighter the color is, the better performance that the CAV controllers can achieve. Uh, by tuning the controller parameters, um, the optimum optim is um, achieved at K1 equals to zero, K2, and uh, K2 is proportional to K3. And under um, optimal situation, at least 17% of the vehicles should be um, changed into CVs to stabilize the entire platoon. 
and also um, we uh, also uh, conduct uh, conducted some comparison. So we compare the performance of the controller under these two conditions. So the first is um, we do consider heterogeneity and time delay. And second, um, we consider homogeneous uh, traffic streams and there, and there is no time delay. And uh, we compare the performance of the controller and find that the maximum number of HDVs that can be stabilized is smaller when we consider heterogeneity and time delay. Okay, um, so to summarize this study, we consider mixed traffic flow conditions, which include HDVs and CAVs, because HDVs typically trigger phantom jams because of irrational um, behaviors, and CAVs can help mitigate this problem. We designed a controller for autonomous vehicles accounting, accounting for two aspects. So one is their behavioral heterogeneity and the other is perception and reaction time delay with HDV operators. So based on the results, we conclude that our design controller can um, achieve the goal that um, to efficiently and safely stabilize the following vehicles. But um, heterogeneity and the perception and reaction time of HDVs can reduce stabilization capability of CAVs. Um, so some following up studies, um, we can try to um, incorporate communication time delay for the CAV models. Also, um, because in this study, we sampled the HDV parameters from assumed distribution. Um, in future work, we can calibrate the HDV models from empirical trajectory data. And there are a lot of microscopic traffic data um, available, for example, the um, NGSIM data and Bosch data. This figure shows an example of stop and go wave in the NGSIM data. And our controller can be applied under uh, in this situation. Um, and the controller can eliminate the red kinks and makes the trajectory or smooth and blue. Um, so thanks for your time. And uh, we are open to questions and comments. You can directly post your comments in the Q&A pad or you can shoot us an email. So um, in addition, um, I want to thank my amazing team at Producy Cat, our um, center director, Dr. Sam Lobby, and the um, CAV enabling technology group. Uh, we have many talented and hardworking students here. It's my privilege to have the chance working with them. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, uh, Eugene. Uh, I see a couple of uh, questions on the chat. Uh, let me let me ask uh, from one by one. Um, I, I think the first question actually related to your future work. Um, with the question is with the number of CAV set to zero, um, does the simulation correlate with actual traffic behavior? Does okay. So basically, if if there's no CAV. Um, is, is your traffic, uh, if, if, does your current model correlate or uh, reflect in terms of real traffic flow? Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the question. So for this work, um, the way we simulate the behavior of other vehicle is um, we sample the, uh, the HDV from some uh, assumed distribution or normal distribution. Um, when uh, even though the um, CAV is the number of CVs is set to zero, and in the future work we try to um, use more realistic data. Um, so we use engine sim data to calibrate the uh, the the dynamics of HTV uh, vehicles. Yes. Eugene, this is a single lane traffic flow, right? Yes. Yeah. And then when you have a single lane traffic flow, 
um, what uh, the, 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 for the human driven vehicle, the HDVs, they have a, um, some sort of car falling model um, uh, you used. What car falling model you use? Um, it's called fall velocity model. Oh, optimal velocity. Okay, okay, yeah, mm. yeah, okay. So that model, you the quest. I guess the question is that uh, whether you have calibrated that model utilizing any any of the real traffic flow. I guess that's the question. Okay, so for this study, we just use um the assume that they as assume the distribution, but we do have um the following study that we calibrate the model based on the uh, empirical trajectory data. And um, we want to like uh, better simulate driver's behavior. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the second question actually related to your, to your answer. And, yes. and the, the question is, does the simulation use a distribution of human perception reaction time delay or a fixed value? I think you use a distribution, right? Distribution, <clears throat> yes. yes. Mm -hmm. You gave a normal distribution if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a third question. Does does your method consider vehicle merging into leave, uh, merge, merging into or leaving the platoon? Uh, if not, what might be the challenge to include that situation? Oh yeah. Uh, so uh, thank you for the question. Um, in this study, um, as you can see, we use a single lane um, scenario, and yeah. there is no merging or um, exiting behavior. Um, but uh, so. Um, and because the focus of, of this study is mainly the Fenton traffic jams, as I mentioned. So it means that um, there is no bottlenecks. And um, so the jams is triggered uh, because of just a stop and go waves. And um, if we consider the merging or merge out behavior, so this kind of bottleneck, uh, this kind of congestion um, belongs to the other type of congestion. But um, we do have following studies, following up studies that um, uh, solve these type of scenarios. So we designed um, an open network, which do have merging and merge right. out behavior. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so sort of follow up on this is, uh, I, is, is your experiment uh, utilizing that uh, loop uh, structure is that on the on the Sujiyama loop? Oh no, we, we do not test it with loop, but the straight line uh, setting. Oh, so so that's a, a single lane um, uh, straight line highway. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you did not test on the uh, the Japanese. Oh, yeah. uh, the, mm -hmm. Okay. 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 And, and um, uh, I have a couple of questions. Um, uh, you, you, in your in your controller design, it shows. Uh, uh, K1 roughly equals to uh, zero and K2 and K3, they are proportional to each other. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any intuitions in terms of why is that? Um, so here, uh, the K1 is mainly the- Maybe you, uh, can, show, you can show that uh, controller again. Yeah, in the chart, yeah. No, you can, if you have that slide on your controller, um, mm -hmm. I, yeah. uh, and then we can, you can, if you sh can share your screen on your, uh, on that slide. Yes. Uh, so here, um, so K1, K2, and K3 actually the, um, are. So, so you did, you did, you did, we are sharing your. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, let me... Yeah. Okay. The, the heat maps, where you have the heat maps? We, uh... Screen, screen two. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. It's fine. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um. So here, uh, K one, K two, and K three actually represents for some uh parameters or uh some coefficients in the model. And yeah, yeah. can you can you show me the model again? Sorry. Yeah. 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 So um, alpha, beta, I, I basically trace off between two objects. And here V it represents for the optimal um, velocity function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so where, where is K1, K2, and K3 here? So this is just as a basic dynamic. And when we um, um, take the, take the, uh, um, the 
so ch we changed from this time domain to the frequency domain and we can find the um the control parameters so k1 is actually um a, a compound factor of alpha and which is the coefficient of the first object and the derivative of optimal velocity and k2 is alpha k3 and is beta i see yeah so they are um so and um, during the optimization process, we found that k1 is equal to um, k1 is equal to zero, and it's because um, uh, that k1 is actually contains some impacts of the trade-off efficient alpha, and um, it means that uh, the so. Because we want to smoothen the traffic flow, and for for CAVs, if you want to do that, you should um you should not uh put a lot of weights on your optimal velocity, or you should not. Uh, so when you found that your preceding vehicle is ex executing some um irrational behavior, the CAV should consider the entire traffic platoon and. So um, that's my explanation that um, the optimal velocity plays less role in the optimization uh, problem. Okay. The, the R, R from the beta is corresponding to H V's, um, um, the optimal velocity parameter and, the, and the, uh, the distance parameter, the range parameter, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it must be emphasized that the alpha and beta, they represent the trade-offs between uh, pulling out the optimal velocity on one hand and also following the preceding vehicle safely on the other hand. So, so they, they, they capture those trade-offs, that trade-off. Okay. Um, there's, there's another question from the audience, say, mm -hmm. um, um, Dr. Levy, Dr. Levy and UGA, nice work. Um, uh, just one question out of curiosity. It seems that uh, your simulation is based upon uh, HDV plus CAV. Uh, have you considered different penetration penetrations of uh, vehicle vehicle communication like uh, HDV plus CHV plus CAV? So basically, it, can you include connected human-driven vehicles? Oh. Uh yeah, thank you. Thank you for the comment. And so um, in this work, we pose some assumption that uh, even with HDVs, they also share the information of CAVs. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's a very valuable um, suggestion that we may um, try to, we may want to tr uh, include some human driven vehicles that do not share their information. Um, so for this work, we just assume that uh, all the vehicles, they are willing to share their information. But um, um, in the following up study, we do consider that uh, there are some unobservable um, human-driven vehicles to the CAV. Yeah, we, we also tested the performance of our design controller. Yeah, yeah, so to recap that, uh, we, we assume that all the all the HDVs were connected. So the, all, all HDVs were CHDVs. In the assumption that we made in this in this particular study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so, uh, so uh, again, this this is actually a question related to this. Um, in the future, for CAVs, that might we might have different CAVs, right? So CAVs could have coming from different vendors. Some from <laughs> you know one vendor, some from the others. Yes. And if you have hidden hidden genetic of uh, these CAVs, how that will impact your um, your your model here? Oh, that's a very interesting question. Uh, so um, we so we we so for this study, we just um, consider the heterogeneity relies in. Um, the human those driven. are human driven vehicles yes, that's right yes. that's right but, yeah, but yeah, yeah. remember cav could come full have 
a hidden jet in genetic as well, right? Yeah, it could yeah. be different. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, uh, this research focused on like uh, we may use a controller to um, use as some uh, traffic operational uh, management uh, approach and. Um, I think it's a very uh, good direction to consider, uh, like if we have different models of CAVs, how we can how we can co uh, make them cooperate with each other. Yeah, I think it's very interesting questions to uh, uh, dig more out. Yeah. Okay, I have uh, uh, the but, audience. But, has, yeah. Yeah, but Go I need to mention that yes. So that. The, the the traffic stream you know in this scenario uh it contains cavs and hdvs some of the cavs were inserted just for tra for traffic stabilization some of the cavs may have nothing to do with traffic stabilization they may just be cavs using the using the road we we, we our interest is cavs that are inserted in the traffic stream to carry out traffic stabilization and typically, we, we, we anticipate that this would be like police vehicles just put there just to do that job. Mm -hmm. So, so, you, so you, yeah. Okay. So you might designate one, uh, you know, like uh, the head of the vehicle string as that uh, controlling vehicle, and the rest of the vehicles within the string, um, you know, could be different type of uh, CAVs, different HDVs as well, right? Oh yeah, and and it doesn't have to be at the head; it can be inside the string stream. It doesn't have to be at the very tip of it. You know, it can be within, and it can be more than one. You know, but the, the, the thing is, how many is too many? Because you can't deploy too few or too many. So you have to some. There's some a certain threshold a number of CAVs that you can put in the traffic stream to stabilize it. So we want to get an idea of that number and see how that number is influenced by the HDV behavior. So that's the purpose of this work. So it's it's not just one CAV at the head. The CAVs can be inside the stream. You know, inside, at, at, in any position, you know, and but their purpose is just to stabilize traffic. There may be other CAVs tra tra traveling on their own to, 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 go to, their, to go to their destinations, right? But uh, the CAVs that we are concerned with are those that are just there with the function of just stabilizing traffic. They're not going, they're not going on any trip, on any trip. Their job is just to put in the stream, just to stabilize it and to minimize the perturbations. Okay, all right. Um, thank you. Um, there's another question from the audience. Uh, did you consider the impact of different uh, traffic volume on the string stability? Uh, what I mean is uh, some simple scenario like light traffic, medium traffic, and heavy traffic type of scenarios. Oh, um, thanks for the question. So, um, so in uh, as you can see from the uh, the, our um, problem settings, we try to um, test the capacity of CAVs. So it means uh, we want to maximize that um, if we only have one CAV, how many, so what's the maximum capacity it can achieve? So how many human driven vehicles it can stabilize? So um, I think like uh, this question is a little bit uh, of different direction. So um, yeah, so that's our uh, problem settings and- yeah. Okay, and to add to that, I mean, yes, um, if you have more traffic and higher traffic volume, then definitely uh, you, I, I mean, I'm assuming he's talking about HDVs, right? If or he or she's talking about HDVs. So yes, you have a higher traffic volume of, of HDVs, then yes, you are going to need more CAVs to stabilize the those HDVs, you know, generally, and 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 yes, in our in our experiments, we can do that. We can we can we can increase the number of of HDVs and look, and look at for each scenario, low, medium, high. Look at the minimum the minimum number of CAVs we need to do that stabilization. So, so that, that that is an interesting thought and perspective, and that can easily that can certainly be done. Okay. Um, Again. Yes, I'm sorry, but again, the, the, the import of this research was to um, accommodate the fact that human-driven vehicles have perception 
reaction delay and that they are heterogeneous, they show heterogeneous behavior and how that can influence the CAV's capacity to stabilize traffic. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, yes, the scenarios, the scenarios can, can change. I mean, we can, we can do this for different scenarios, but the essence of our work basically was to show that this can be done. And from there, yes, we can do many extensions and do many exciting angles and, and perspectives. So, so yes, so low, medium, high traffic, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, yeah. the other uh, another question, sort of related to this, is they ask you. Uh, there's a question to ask you: What's the distribution of CVs within your traffic stream um, uh, when you do the sim your simulation? So, no. so, so within your traffic stream, how many CAVs and uh, what is the percentage of CAVs? I guess that's the. I, I guess the, you what what your 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 study didn't really look at. The, you're looking at really the per, perception reaction delays and the hidden geniality. Uh, one of the CAVs have that impact the falling traffic. Is that right? Yeah. So so okay. So let's assume that uh, there there. Are, there are no CAVs and there are only HDVs in the traffic stream. Okay, let's, let's assume this for, for now. Only HDVs. Now we are inserting these CAVs in the traffic stream to do the stabilization. Mm -hmm. So that is, a, that is the objective of our, of our work. Yeah, How yeah, yeah. should I put there to achieve that traffic stabilization? So that's what you are doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so in the in the in other scenario, where you have the traffic stream having several CAVs and a few HDVs, and your police CAVs do the do the stabilization, then in that case, um, we, you can we can recruit the existing non-police CAVs to help in the task of stabilization. So that really helps. But in the in the early phase of the transition period. We expect that the traffic stream is going to be heavily dominated by HDVs, and that's where this this uh, is going to come into play, and it's going to be very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think I can answer. Maybe you can answer another question. It's I know the answer also. Um, uh, are the CAVs communicating with each other? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, um, there's there's uh, one more question if I can um, take a look. Uh, is any barrier uh, taken into the uh, model for uh, D trim D? Uh, if you can look at, I don't know which parameter this uh, this question refer to D T R E A M. Uh, I'm not sure what the delta. What... I, I believe they're saying stream, Henry. Oh, stream. Oh, okay. Is there any barrier taken into the model uh, for the stream? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't understand the question. So I don't, I yeah, don't neither do I. Neither do yeah. I. So, but, but, but the questioner is welcome to you know, send us email with, with a more detailed uh, description of his questions, his or her questions, so we can, we can answer it.